I can tell the truth in that I never once was frustrated with him. There was never a point, whereas most children and our children and our previous children, there, was, there were times where, you know, they'd be crying and you'd try everything, you know, you'd sit down and they know you're sitting down, so you have got to stand up and that whole routine. And really, we never had to experience that with Oaks. He was just a really, really happy baby. It was a Saturday afternoon and the other kids had just finished taking a bath. And within minutes, Oaks uh, found his way into our bathroom. I heard from outside the cries of Becky, and uh, I ran in and, and saw what had happened. Obviously, it was um, just a very, very traumatic um, situation with Oaks, and I took Oaks from Becky's arms and started uh, CPR on him as, as fast as I could. And in the meantime, Becky was calling uh, 911. Well, as far as a parent is concerned, this is the most horrible thing that can ever happen, the loss of a child. It's the most staggering, devastating event in, in a family's life, especially the drowning of a little child inside the house when the parents are, are home. It's a horrific experience, and there really is no superficial way to deal with it. There are no shallow answers that work. At a time like that, people need a word that is transcendent, that is true, that is absolute, and that is biblical. He was in the hospital that first night. We stayed with him all night, and, and it was very touch and go. He was uh, twice, he was very, very close to of us losing him. Our hearts were just open before the Lord, just asking him to spare our little boy and to, to bring him back. When I arrived at the hospital, I, I, I went in to talk to Becky and Andy, and I just began to talk from what the Word of God has to say. And I reminded them that Jesus said, permit the little children to come unto me and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. And Jesus said, the little ones belong to the kingdom of heaven. As we gathered around Oaks, we prayed that the Lord would just touch his body, touch his mind. He was in a coma the whole time. He was uh, unconscious the entire time. And we just prayed for a complete miracle. At that point, we knew uh, what he was up against uh, from what the doctors were saying. There was no chance is what they were giving us. There was no glimmer of hope. There was no chance. And so we just continued to pray to the Lord. Then I went on to kind of develop that reality that when a child hasn't yet reached the age of accountability and personal responsibility before God, when a child, to use biblical language, doesn't know right from wrong, doesn't know right hand from left hand, they are under the special care of God. As we were in the hospital, the Sunday before Oaks died, um, a verse that he led me to in Matthew was so comforting. And they brought to him a paralytic lying on a bed. Seeing their faith, Jesus said to the paralytic, Take courage, son, your sins are forgiven. And some of the scribes said to themselves, This fellow blasphemes. And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Why are you thinking evil in your hearts? Which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up and walk? But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. Then he said to the paralytic, get up, pick up your bed and go home. And he got up and went home. But when the crowd saw this, they were awestruck and glorified God who had given such authority to men. And as I read that verse, it just hit me. He spoke the heavens in the place. He can heal oaks, but the true miracle is that Oaks can be with him forever in heaven. I think one of the most dramatic evidences of hope in the death of a child comes from David's experience in the Old Testament. Uh, David had uh, an affair with Bathsheba and a child was conceived. It was a sinful affair, obviously it was adultery, it also involved the murder, the virtual murder of her husband so he could take her to himself. 
the child was produced, in punishment, God took the life of that child. In response, David's reaction was very amazing. He said this, He cannot come to me, but I will go to him. David had the confidence that he would go where that child was. And that's why before the child died, when the child became very ill, he mourned and wept. And as soon as that child died, the Bible says he cleaned himself up, wiped the sadness off his face, and confidently said, he can't come to me, but I will go to him. And David knew exactly where he was going because in the Psalms, he said, I shall be satisfied when I awake in your likeness. He knew he was going into the presence of God, and that's where he would see that child. Very different by the way, than his experience with Absalom. When his adult son Absalom died, a horrible death, Absalom led a revolution against his own father. He was riding a horse, stories an amazing story, got his hair, long hair caught in a tree, was suspended there, and the defenders of his own father against the revolution slaughtered him, and David could not be consoled. He could not stop weeping and sorrowing because he knew that he would never see Absalom again, because Absalom was a sinful reprobate who had not embraced the truth of God. So in the death of Absalom, there was no consolation. In the death of an infant son, there was consolation. He knew where he was. He also knew where Absalom was, and it was not a place he would ever see him again. I said to Andy, I feel like saying sorry to Oaks because I wasn't watching him. But I remember Andy wrapping his arms around me and saying, let's pray about that. And he prayed that the Lord take that from me and that nothing catches God by surprise, that God has this in his plans. And we can be so fortunate that we had Oaks 12 days in the hospital. Romans 8, 28, for God causes all things to work together for good to those that love Him and to those that are called according to His purpose. God, our Heavenly Father, knows. He knows more mm -hmm. of what we're going through than mm -hmm. we do. Mm -hmm. He knows what it's like to watch His Son die before Him. And, and yet it was His plan, it was His ultimate sovereign plan that He would send His own Son to earth to live a perfect life without sin and that He would be led to the cross, die, a sinner's death and be raised again on the third day so that we may know him.